Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for God's Issue 1, 2023. And that's a pretty awesome looking cover right there. It just really kind of pulls you in and shows all this different kind of stuff going on. Now, I didn't have this on my pull list, but I had uh, some kind of rewards and I was able to get this one through my reward stuff with my comic book shop. And this is $9.99. This is a beefy, hefty kind of issue. And this was kind of weird. Now, overall, the art is magnificent. It's really, really good. I love the way that the characters and the action are drawn. It's getting into the story aspect of it. It's definitely something that has to plot dump for you and get the information through because we get more introduction and understanding of when dimitri aiko um the powers that be and the natural order of things uh from what i can tell from what i kind of had from this setup it is almost kind of weird and then i'm reading this and i'm like this sounds like a magic branch with the powers that be and the natural order of things being kind of like a science camp, like the two kind of opposing forces. And I'm just like, isn't that kind of like already what we got uh, Doctor Strange with the Sorcerer Supreme and various other kind of tech outfits, mainly usually the top ones being like kind of Tony, uh, Moon Girl, uh, Reed Richards, Doctor Doom, all those kind of ones. That's why I was kind of confused with this. I do not think this is bad, but this is very much trying to lay out what's kind of going on and what kind of shape this thing is coming because we need Wynn and Aiko and Dimitri to be understood and how they kind of factor into things and what's kind of going on. I don't know if I will continue with this. Um, I'll kind of have to see. It's not badly written, but it's definitely one that if you're not interested in, I totally get one definitely about the price. But for even the price, even if you don't like the story, I think that the art is definitely worth it for that kind of effect. Uh, and I don't think the story is bad. It's just trying to come to terms with the kind of new mythology that's kind of being broken down and put into place with this. So let's kind of get into it. I know that's kind of a lot to kind of dig into but this I did not hate this one but it didn't pull me in as much as I would have hoped so we start off and we see some crazy ass shit going down just beautiful artwork and strange is like I'm too old for this no I'm old you're just tired it wears at me this endless war between good and evil and the part we play in it hmm and you would be good I suppose Stephen Strange I fight for the light for causes better than I, and for fate based in forever, and her sister's hope and life. That is who I am. Sure sounds nice. Good, uh, sure. Sounds nice. Good speech. But you didn't really answer the question, did you? As we see this kind of weird book and everything, and when kind of putting it in his pocket. And Strange pauses for a beat, and then he says, I am good. And you, win. are you good, or are you evil? Stephen, my boy, who can tell the difference anymore? He's looking back. He's like, okay. Now, granted, Wynn's design, I like the jacket and everything. Uh, we do get back to that at a point. But first, we go ten years into the past. Um, and we see this bartender and this woman kind of waiting. That her husband's en route. Ah, big date? It is. Good for you. I've come close a few times, but I've never actually been married. I have heard, however, that it's important not to lose the whatever it is. The spark, the romance. Have you guys been together long? Not really. We've been married five, no, six now. Six years. Five good ones. How'd you meet? It was here at this very bar. Which, if you're into that kind of thing, and to the light of the universe, makes the theme of tonight's rendezvous symmetry. Actually, now that I think about it, I will have another. Our little secret, as she's like looking at like her watch, and then he's like running behind. Uh, well, the bartender's like, is he running behind? Of course, the man has an unhealthy aversion to watches, clocks, calendars, that's so, it is. When you consider time an inconvenience, it's quite uh, easy to always be late. And I'm like, interesting. And then we shift. It's like, I'm going to be late. Why are we here? Well, you're working, and I'm only here because you are. Which building is it again? And then we have this uh, 
And the Dimitri dude's got like this weird like little thing that's like, mm, you have arrived. Your uh, location, an unregistered minor assembly that has escalated into a major incident. That's just the one that's like, okay. Now granted, the little kind of like device that's there is kind of interesting. Then we see this kind of giant party and a Spider-Man mask. It's like, <laughs> cool. And then they're welcomed by these two masked figures. Uh, welcome, users of the craft. You have passed your first trial, the secret words, which begat the hidden path. And as you have followed it and found your way here, I welcome you to this, our unholy bac uh, bacchanal. We beg you, we beseech you, be body, be carnal, be your most decadent selves. Uncover faces, my love. Horrible, horrible. Hmm. I see there is one small problem. You seem to have forgotten your mask. I wouldn't say we forgot them. Do not fr uh, Do not fight and do not fret. As we understand, eagerness often leads to forgetfulness and hunger is the mother of all impatience. We have uh, some you can purchase at a cost which is barely worth mentioning. Shall we barter? I can't do this tonight. It's okay. So, uh, my name is Dimitri. I'm a proxy in service to the natural order of things and the chained apprentice of the one and only avatar to the powers that be. And the thing is, I don't mind having these kind of things thrown about. However, just because you say a thing or certain kind of jargon doesn't mean we understand the context of what that means. You know what I mean? It's it's important to have context and understanding of what's going on. Because I still don't understand, even as we get through this, what the avatar of the powers that be is. And uh, because he's a proxy in the service of the natural order of things and the chained apprentice of the one and only avatar of the powers that be. So he's kind of like an in-betweener uh, of the science, I guess, kind of thing and the magical kind of thing. So we'll kind of have to see how that kind of works out. That's my kind of understanding at this point. If that's completely wrong, please tell me and help me understand better. I'm fine with that. This is just what I've kind of tried to get from what's going on here. So I don't know what the proxy is or what it does. I think we're going to need to see your invitations. Well, that's a problem because we weren't invited. We were sent. Uh, now, I don't want to... I don't want to be here, but here I am, and not for nothing, but even if I couldn't clearly see the artifacts of a recently cast incantation, I would certainly still smell the fresh blood in the air. Were the two of you doing something you weren't supposed to? Ah, that. Yes, that. So, that there, like, Dimitri, I, I still don't have a handle on Dimitri, but when, right there, just being like, I don't want to be here, what the fuck did you do, is kind of like, I like that. I'm like, okay, you got me at least on his character. Uh, and it doesn't feel like a copy of Doctor Strange at this point. You know what? There's something familiar about all this. What does your thing say uh, who they are? Well, let's see. They are the Baron and Baroness of Wolverhampton, Lord of the Land, and Lady of the Lake. These are uh, titles they hold in absentia as they abandoned their seat of power years ago. They are currently visiting these fair lands indefinitely and according to their visas with a theological dispensation. It says that she is Nume de Lac, uh, he is the Lion of Wolves. Take off your masks, and we see that they aren't human. Now I remember, you two were in Krakow four years ago. You set human traps disguised as parties. Then you invite all the local magical practitioners of means, cast some low-level incantation that makes the lights flicker or something. And after that, when everyone is having a good time, you pick your victim and make a meal of them, right? So, well, that's good to get that down. Oh, they're like, oh, just a few souls. We're very careful who we choose. They only pick the worst of the worst. It's like, right. And they occasionally get carried away. We have to eat, you know. What's our current position on this kind of nonsense? And I love that. It's just like, what the fuck? The compact is clear. I, of course, observe and document. And you, well, minor infraction like this, you tend to look the other way. Exactly. Why am I here? Inside this building is a recently manifested planar demon. Is that true? And then they're looking off like they fucking shat the bed. It's like... You shit the sheets. It's right there. What did you do? Maybe. Show me the bodies or what's left of them. And I'm guessing one of you got the spell wrong, mixed up a word, or transposed a V and a TH. That's ridiculous. Whatever you might think of our appetites, we're not amateurs. We're professionals. We would never do that. It's like, ah, shit. I love it. He takes off his coat. He's like, where's the demon? And they're like, in the bathroom. It's like, god damn it. This is the stuff that I'm like, oh, okay, I'm getting into. This is showing characters, showing how they kind of deal with things. 
And then we see uh, the woman at the bar, which is Brevert's, which that's kind of awesome. Uh, he came up to you. You are just sitting at the bar. I was. What did you say? Not much. He sat down, said hello, and ordered a drink, and he did it all with a look and maybe two words. It was almost like he was more of a presence than a person. It's hard to explain. That's how the magic works, right? Uh, yes, actually it is. And that was that. Whirlwind ensues. You have to understand, I'm a cautious person with a scientific mind. I can't help it. I always plan for failure because you expect the worst, then more often than not, you can avoid disaster. And that's the thing. I, Even though I like reading this stuff about Wynne, that really speaks to me of her character because... It's not that we want the worst to happen, but we sometimes have to figure out failure points to try and avoid an even worse kind of thing. And some people say romance is dead. I know, I know, I'm not a romantic. It's a weakness. So all this planning for failure, it would make sense that you're good at finding flaws. What were his? Looked as hard as she could, came closest to finding one was that he was a little too mysterious without question... Uh, uh, answered questions without answering the question, but that, well, wasn't so bad. This age of oversharing and everything. I'm not going to lie, this experience was revelatory. Again, I'm not a romantic. I'm not built for it, but he made me want to be one. So, five good years. Yes, five good years. Great years. Until the day came that I had to make an impossible choice. What's that like? Lesser of two evils? No. It's much worse than that. As we then shift back to Wayne, dealing with a demon. I know you're in there! And I know, everyone loves a vacation, but you don't belong here, and you have to go home. So either you can voluntarily return to your rightful realm, or I have to send you back the old-fashioned way. What's it gonna be? It's like, alright, shifty, shifty, shifty. And then it's like, fuck that noise! It's like, no shit. And I love this strange use of panels here, of showcasing action and everything, because even though I know comics... You've got pages, and you usually have certain kind of layouts to make sure everything works out. It's nice to see kind of experimentation. Not going anywhere. I like it here. What if I say, please? As it then grabs and, and fucking, like, throws out through the doors. Dimitri's just, like, on the side. A little help, maybe? It says here it's a Chaos Demon, Planar Escape B, Subclass uh, Deca Demon. And its age is, woof, over 650,000 years old. Sounds bad for you, boss. Ah, it does say here that it has a weakness for moving the heart causes planar regeneration. Does that help? Yes, it does, as he rips out a heart. And then, uh, now, where does this... And then he then gets grabbed. That hurt. Now you hurt. Ah! Oh, little mistake here. I misread. It says hearts with an S. Plural. You gotta get both of them. Sorry about that. And then he's like, fuck! So, this stuff, I'm like, alright, alright. As we get to later, as Wynn goes in, uh, Dimitri's kind of staying out. It's like, he says he'll sit back, and be quiet. You wait outside. I'll have a beer. Whatever isn't terrible. You are late. As he downs his beer. Baby, I have had a day. It's like, he is not wrong. Now granted, compared to any of his other days, I don't know how bad that is, but dealing with a demon that you have to rip out the hearts of, yeah. I kind of feel for Dimitri waiting outside and being like, yeah, I gotta fuck with my little phony shit. And then he's asking about what we're celebrating. She got a promotion, new title, responsibilities. Talk to you about it because if I take it, it changes things and it changes things for us. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Sometimes change is good. Everything else in the world, sure. I get losing some sleep over that, but not us. I do uh, like this new outfit. Very cool. It suits you. Last year, last year I figured out who you really are. And then he's like trying to deflect, talking about like self-help books. If there's something wrong with me, then there must be something wrong with the world. The solution is to go deeper, buy in uh, completely, and more importantly, buy more damn books. It's a virus, I tell you, which coincidentally is where the term viral marketing actually came from. Uh, okay, I may be exaggerating. I definitely made that last bit up. No win. I mean, I figured out who you really are. You are Sir Redwin, Lord of the Highlands, Root of the World Tree, Salt of the Earth. Interesting titles, but... Again, we need context of what this means. You are, at, as best our records show, over 1,000 years old. You are the avatar of the powers that be, and you never told me. Didn't really come up, did it? Well, it sure has now. I don't suppose it's a good enough reason that I wanted you to like me for who I was, not what I was. Probably not. How'd you find out? The new lab she started working at last year turned out to be more than that. Uh, do real research just to cover for a recruitment program. The official, unofficial name they have... Uh, for it is a curiosity incubator. I know this is a lot, but it it's literally just we're talking at this point. So 
I get how some people be like, ugh, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm into. Now, granted, it's not as organic as I would like, but it's not the worst kind of thing of like, essentially Jeff Goldblum in the fly, like, puking it out all on me. Uh, I get it if you feel that way, because it's close to that. Let's see. This is when you start, you are just beginning working in your area of research. We had rules, protocols, but if you look close enough, there were indications of something lurking under the surface. Basically a rabbit hole test, seeing how deep you'd want to go. Well, they had you pinned in. They, how far did you go? Oh, all the way down. If you had a question, the answer was there. You just had to dig through old research archival data and hidden records, and it scaled. The real purpose of the lab. What's the real structure of the world? What's the real order of the universe? What is the natural order of things? Who are the powers that be? And down to you and me, who works for them? I really do like the new outfit. I will say this about the centivars. They all, uh, they do always look sharp. They've offered me 97th. And it's like, okay, we only get kind of context for that later on when we find the second one. Hey, the last prime of the centum. That's great. Congratulations. You deserve it. It's not great, Win. Sure. Sure it is. I'm an avatar. You're a centivar. Equally yoked and happily ever after. What could be wrong with that? We're at war. It's like, okay. And then we're still kind of talking through this whole kind of thing. Technically, it's a kind of detente. Explain it to me. Because from what I've learned, every godly power in the universe has an opposite. And all of those oppositional gods share a lesser abstract among them. A way for them to work together, even though their very nature makes them adversarial. Interesting kind of way to put that up. All the gods have this, except yours and now mine, because they hate each other that much. What am I missing? It's like, okay, so that's kind of how the power structure works out here. Granted, she's turned them both as gods, so we'll kind of see how that kind of works out. Granted, I could totally be misunderstanding my different kind of, uh, my understanding of how this kind of works out, but we'll, I guess, kind of see you later. Here's an idea. Maybe we just don't tell anyone about us. It'll be our little secret. You are known, and the sole caveat for me becoming centivar is that I have to sever myself from you, one way or another. So you're playing that game. Uh, so they're playing that game, are they? Yes, they're making me choose. On one hand, I get to do what I was born to do at a level I could never have imagined before. Now I get to discover the universe and ponder the meaning of everything. And I get to do it forever because as long as I'm a centivar, I'm basically immortal. And on the other hand, I get mortality and the love of a good man. I go. That is a hard choice. A very difficult one. However, yes, you could be immortal, but then you are chained to their protocols. However, you could still be mortal and have the love of a good man and still try and find those things on your own path in your own ways. But that is not how this story goes. Here's an idea. You could give it up for me. And she's right. There's both kind of points here. You've already lived many lifetimes, so maybe you quit and I could, ha uh, I could have both. Is that what you want me to do? No, of course not. I've seen our records of you. You're very good at this. Plus, we both know what the fine print says. There's no getting out once you're in. Though, I think it's important that she knew it, but un wanted to see how he would react to having that request. So I've turned it over and over in my head. There's only one logical, acceptable option. We have to get a divorce. Or, hear me out, we could just, just lie about getting one. Some kind of performative severance is possible. They wouldn't even notice. You are the single avatar of the powers that be. In contrast to that, I would be one of the hundreds centivars of the natural order of things. You may not be expendable, but I would be. Fair point. Well, you don't know my god, so you don't know how wrong you are. But I'm, it's still a gamble I'd take. You're worth it. Our timeline is forever, and we only have to get caught once. The, bad, uh, the odds are bad, and I've weighed my options. I'm sorry. I'll send over the papers. You should do that. And then I won't sign them. And even after not signing, I'll burn them. This is more important than you and me. It's like, okay. Disagree. Not dying isn't living, kiddo. I've been around long enough to know that. So whatever my god likes it or, or whether so whether my god likes it or not, I'll find a way to quit. I hate my job anyway. They said you'd say that. They predicted it. The theorists among the natural order of things have put the odds of a return to war with the powers that be at 84% unless certain things happen. And you, my dear husband, are the single biggest factor in avoiding that. Most of the theorists think uh, that's why I was chosen. Some of the sentiment think that's the sole, uh, the sole reason why I was recruited in the first place. Either way, we don't really have a choice. A declaration has to be made. A statement of purpose demonstrated. Tonight is one of those things that just has to happen. I'm leaving you, Wynn. But I love you. I know. I'm not kidding. I'm not signing anything. 
So it's a declaration then. Just know I love you too. As she then forms a gun out of nowhere and shoots him. We hear zzz, and he gets thrown out the window and Dimitri's looking at him. She's like, make sure you bury him somewhere nice as his face is smoking. And then we get to now and we see uh, that He's got a scar, he's got white hair around that kind of area, uh, his eyes screwed up, and he's standing outside of the Sanctum Sanctorum. Should I ring the doorbell or something? No, they know we're here. And we see that Wong knows him. Ah, you're back. I am. You've been gone a while. Where have you been? You know how it is, Wong. The wind blows, you go here and there, it's hard to remember. But then Dimitri immediately goes into the long list of where they've been. Oh, I remember. First you were gambling in the hidden city of Kunlun, and then you overbet, lost big, and as a result we got dragged into a grail quest, which landed us in the dead city of Val Mortis, where, by the way, it's a crime to find a grail because a ghost city basically runs on the concept of mortality. Then we found it immediately, uh, found it anyway, and were immediately thrown in a ghost prison. Not a very nice place, and oh, by the way, do you know what ghosts serve for dinner in prison? Absolutely nothing. I lost 20 pounds. When we were finally broke out, I'd had enough of you, and you'd had enough of me, so we chose to go our separate ways. You wanted to figure out where everything went wrong, and went to some kind of hot springs for mystics in Jotunheim. Well, I blew off steam, uh, some steam in Sevalith, where, for the last year, I was in a very committed but totally questionable relationship with a very tall vampire lady. Which, honestly, was going great until you showed up yesterday saying we had to leave immediately, you know, because we were summoned. And then looking at Owen, just looking at him like, oh, I see, you did remember. You're just trying to be cool for your magic friend. Sorry. It's like, <laughs> damn, Dimitri. Their dynamic is very interesting. If the two of you are done, uh, we'd better get to it. What about Strange? He's already there. Everyone is. We're meeting at the library. Uh, do you want to do the honors? I do not. Please go right ahead. The library worlds. I hate this place. Damn, that looks awesome, though. Not as much as I hate these people. The Library of Worlds. Attention, please. The hour grows short and our need is great. I am the Sorcerer Supreme. Give me your eyes. I have, gray, I have news of this gravest of days. The world is surely ending and its only hope is gathered now in this room. Every living thing that calls it home looks to us for salvation. Why? A Babylon event has begun. It's strange just giving that information. And we see, like, Dr. Doom, Reed Richards... And Dimitri's like, well, that sounds bad. He asks if he's certain that it's a Babylon event. And then he says, last night there was a bleed on the plains of uh, Mercador. When I arrived, I found the Guardian twins blinded in the infernal glyph over which they stood sentinel stolen. I had to delve deep, but uh, these were the last images burned into their minds. It appears to be the proto-mage, Kubisk Kor, long thought dead, who disappeared years ago. Now he has seemingly returned at the apex of his strength. And how and why... We do not know, but one thing is sure, he now has the staff of the Living Tribunal. It's like, that's not a good thing. Living Tribunal can, like, do some shit. Amadeus is like, it's an impressive stick, but is it a Babylon event? I don't know. There's more, Amadeus. I give you Dr. St. Uh, Mayor Sersel. Uh, yeah, Sersel. Second Centivar the Centum. So it's like, okay, now we see the second. And that's an important thing because, like, okay, she was 97. Fortunately, the news I bring not only supports the Sorcerer Supreme's assertion, it paints a darker picture with much greater clarity. And since he's like a doctor as well, no, granted, I, you know, how he might be magical as well. It's like, could be, he's definitely within the, like, natural order of things, could be more science-based. I don't know. Definitely kind of magical, mystical kind of stuff, too. But we'll kind of see. Hey, look, there's your ex. She's not my ex. Well, there's the woman you love more than anything, who instead of loving you back, decided to shoot you in the face. Oh, I see. You knew all that. You were just trying to act like everything is fine, even though it most definitely is not. Sorry. So then we see what was going on. Now, granted, I've kind of gone over this, but we see that it's from two hours ago from a hidden AIM station here in New York. Containment back uh, facility for long dormant former hell technology. Watch. Do you know why the pit was uh, pit is sealed? Do you understand what you were opening? Do you understand what you're making me do? Prometheus pit activating in 10, 9... When my God made the universe, he placed each of us inside a box. Many cannot see this box, the idea of it, the very shape of it, but the box is your home, and oh, how you hate it. Your existence, all of reality, is inside that. You love the dream and hate the box, but what I tell you now is the truth, and it is the hardest truth you will ever hear. I'm here to destroy the dream and wake you from your slumber. Which doesn't sound bad until it's like I'm starting to kill people and shit. No, no, please don't. Three. 
your scientist and your curiosity. You drilled a hole in, in existence to mine for exotic matter and never asked the question, where do my actions lead? What do my actions feed? Always important to ask that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Regrets are for the dream. You are awake now. Open your eyes as he's thrown into the pit. The feed ends here with the casting of the spell, the opening of the pit. The spell. Did I hear it correctly, or was that the beginning of an Elder Pantheon breach? I believe it was, Jericho. And this is the uh, the real power of the Staff of the Living Tribunal. The user in the spell can rewrite a... Uh, staff can write a spell and rewrite reality in a continuum, leaving no room for a counterspell. The only weakness is it requires enormous amounts of energy, which, unfortunately, has been solved by accessing a dying universe through the Prometheus Pit. Not good. We are looking at a potential feedback loop of creation and destruction, a closed circle, an endless cycle. Make no uh, mistake, this is a Babylon event. That ain't good, motherfuckers! Best plan for stopping this is an odd assault. Three fronts, a science team to assault and close the breach, a magical holding force to contain the Elder's flight, and a simultaneous centum attack on the proto-mage to try and stop the Cascadian spell. Actually, that's a pretty decent plan. We have to do this together as one. For we are the world's last, best hope. Come on, let's go. You hungry? Want a kebab? No! Food? What? The whole world's ending. See? That's exactly why I can't stand those people. So dramatic. Hey, pick that up. And he picks the thing up. He's like, it's a penny. No, that's a John Wilkes Booth penny. I could, uh, I bet we could trade this for something good. It's like, what? And then we see them going around essentially doing what is like, fuck all, while these guys are like trying to deal with this, uh, kubisk. And he's like doing his thing, being like, "Yeah, you motherfuckers are here." Oh, it appears the future deniers of the inevitability have arrived, just in time to see my mighty works. We see T'Challa and Reed. Behold, and we see all kinds of crazy shit. And I love it because it looks completely and utterly gnarly, and I love the purple Babylon shit. It's just like, yep, the collector's collection, incredible. Do you know what this is? It's a penny. And it's like, oh, and the collector looks fucking crazy. Eyeballs and everything. It's from another Earth, lost in the Great Collapse. The now extinct, for, uh, forgotten by all but a select few, brain 71241. You see, it should have uh, been a dark mirror, but somehow was not. Perhaps it can be again. Sounds rare. I have to have it. Hey kid, you see anything interesting? This clock has six hands. Okay, we'll trade you for the clock and this book. Done. It's like, okay. We have to hurry. There isn't much time. As we planned, users of earthly science shut down the Prometheus pit that feeds the eldritch gods. Users of earth, earthly magic defend the rift, prevent the gods of Babylon from coming through completely. While we, the centum of the natural order of things, will deal with this upstart mage, Kubik's core. Kubik's core. Blah, blah. So, they're doing that. And we're over here at the Contemplator's Garden. It's like, oh shit, this thing's got six hands, man. Ah, hands, uh, three hands for proceed time and three hands for the axes of all things. The synchronicity of power, life, and purpose all waxing and waning as if there were some grand design to it all. I often wonder if this is true. I often wonder if it is not. Thank you. This is a great gift. Please, I'll only match your generosity with my own. There are four bases here, each a container of a rare and precious gift. Um, choose, and in doing so, end all that. I'll take the weird-looking one. And it's like, all right. We shift over to reading to T'Challa actually doing some stuff. Uh, Reed asking kind of what the status is. Even like some AIM people helping us. Like, this is fucking nuts. Not well, Reed. Magic users are being overwhelmed. We have to cut off the energy source the beasts are feeding off of. And we have to do it now. As we see some dude's head getting fucking eaten. Bad news on that front. The pit is, uh, is powering the shield. Best estimate is an hour to drill through. We don't have an hour. Then we best we uh, we do our best and hope they will as will also. Then we're at the Possessor's Vault. They blast open the uh, base. It's like, you broke it. We needed what was inside. Okay, but you could have just reached your hand in there. Or, I don't know, turn it upside down. We'll get you a new base. There's a lesser than 1% chance he gets you a new base. Here you go. This dude, the Possessor, talked about not uh, washing themselves because there's chemicals in the waters. Uh, that they're actually clean. I'll get the contents of the security box. Then I want you to leave. Nice guy. If you say so. What's the deal with the book? What book? That book. The one you got from the collector. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. The boot chub, uh, but chub was written one uh, word at a time over a hundred years by the Gregory, completed in the year 
1082 CE. It has a unique artifact in Mystic Lore that has the power to and then Gwyn kind of grabs it and says, nope, don't listen to that, listen to me. Here's what you need to know. It's one of the most powerful mystic tomes in the entire history of magic. It should not have been in that man's collection and it cannot fall into the wrong hands. Understood? Yeah. It's like, here's your thing. I don't want to touch it. Unknown device pre-origin. That's it. It's a translocator point-to-point -point teleportation between here and somewhere else. What are you planning to do with that? Don't worry about it. And then shift back to seeing what's kind of going on in the battle. Asking what's going on with Kubik's core. But know that you've drawn the attention of the natural order of things, and they are not pleased. We know. My master assumed yours would be the most defended. As my master is wise beyond measure and understands our very existence, our very everything, in a way that yours cannot. He, uh, he saw you standing there before me today. He saw you, and he gave me this. And he utilizes this weird kind of egg thing. And it pretty much thunder kills all of the centum. It's like, shit. This is a final farewell to the natural order of things. It's like, that's not good. And the beginning of a new age. That's really kind of cool art to showcase that. So getting into this, this part stuff is interesting. It's just trying to get an understanding of what's kind of going on with the overall arching plot of the powers that be in the natural order of things. This stuff is kind of cool. Grand Bazaar of the Traitor. With this exchange, we are bound, and in being bound, we are agreed. The broken stones of power for access... Uh, to the inhuman portal of Eld Eldrak. Done and done. It's like, hmm. Stones of power. Interesting. To see what goes on with that. Sounds kind of like infinity stones. Ah, Wynn. Good to see you again. You look well. Yoga? No, absolutely not. So Strange was getting that kind of stuff, I guess. Or giving that kind of stuff. Well, whatever you're doing, it's working for you. Okay, so him, I understand. He's a self-absorbed disaster, but what are, why are you here? I don't understand. You're supposed to be saving the world. There was a plan. You gave a speech. Unfortunately, more often than not, speeches are a grandiose way to escape action that might result in a changed state. See, politicians, salesmen, and increasingly of late sorcerers supremes. Nonsense. The speeches are, are rallying the children so they will take direct action while the adults seek a more effective asymmetrical solution. Often, this is called solving the actual problem. What are you doing? Why are you here? It's like, damn! That's a little bit more mean than Strange usually is, at least for what I've seen. It's like, god damn. Honestly, I have no idea. Rare for the same reason as you, the portal. But he has made a trade and you have not. Well, all I have is a strange locator. Absurd. Those are as common as, which is spatially locked to the possessor's vault. I would accept an exchange of this manner. I had a feeling you might. So, we go through the door, and then what? Eldrak does not send you where you want to go. It sends you where you need to go. And more importantly than that, it delivers you there at the perfect moment. When the world needs saving and the darkness most fears the light. So... Once more under the breach, one last charge of the light brigade. Uh huh. And the, uh, on the count of three. One, two, three. As Strange bolts in, when kind of stops up short, and Demetrius like, "What? Give it a second, just to make sure." Okay, let's go. Let me see fucking purple tentacles and shit. Ah, shit. And then we see even more tentacles and shit as Aiko is calls for Win, and he's like, "No, nah, this isn't good." Ah, there you are. I have broken the natural order of things, upset the balance, ended the dreams of dreamers. It's only fitting that I bring the powers of B to heal as well. My master is a box just for you, Avatar. He's built you a home. I will take you there. I will show it to you. And then he utilizes some kind of bead thing that like, whoo, breaks and kills some shit. It's like, damn, little, little help here. Zoom. Odds of assistance in this current scenario are rather slim. Also of note is that the minor... Chaos Lepods feed mostly on forebrain and fatty tumors, so take heart, and boy, you can survive this. Ugh. Oh wait, no, that's Dimitri being screwed over. I don't know yet what spurred your actions today. All I know is that you have made a mortal enemy, and one who is not easily ignored. Prepare yourself for the full might of the powers that be. Prepare for it, as he threw like a knife thingy. It's like, holy shit. And then he gets grabbed, and, whoop, and the book falls out. It's like, that's not good. When God's the book. You've dropped the book, eh? And then he goes to pick up the book. What is this? A thing of power, a book of lore, or dare I hope for hidden knowledge. But that's the thing. And the secrets of long dead, I, I, uh, and then he's kind of down. It's like, what the fuck's going on? Here's a little secret knowledge for you. This is old as life itself. As things start crashing down, and he pretty much stomps on him. So 
Then we see later, we see kind of a repeat of what was kind of going on. But we get a little bit more information. We get another page. Clever using the butch cub. Uh, butch cub. Butch cub. I think. Butch cub. I thought you told me that the book couldn't fall into the wrong hands. Butch cub. Yeah. Yeah, I just needed you to make a fuss when the time was right. And then we get, like, Aiko and the second one still. All. I think it's the second one. I don't understand. Zoom. The Butch Cub was written one word at a time over a hundred years by the Grigori, uh, completed in the year 1082 CE. It is a unique artifact in mystic lore in that it possesses the power to erase knowledge from the user. The longer you read it, the more it eats your mind. And once you start, you can't break free. Someone else has to stop you. Well, that's terrifying. Yeah, and that actually was a fucking great way to fucking stop that. It's the nature of what we do. Now, where does it mean? Good and evil. Da da da. And then we get back to finishing it because I can't and I've seen it all. It's time to give up this romantic notion of doing the right thing for the right reasons. Yes, there's an endless war between good and evil. The real problem is that it's been going on so long that all these people we fight for, they don't care about good and evil anymore. They just care about the trench warfare winning today's encounter. And if it costs their soul, then so be it. But then you have to ask yourself, why are we fighting so hard to save something that's already lost? I just don't have faith in it anymore. It's all pointless. It's all pain. There's one thing I know for sure. It's that. And it's like, damn, that's a big thing. Wing. And then someone says, hey. And then Aiko comes and kisses him. And she says, that's for saving us. And then Strange and Dimitri. Uh, Strange is looking smug. Dimitri's happy. And then again, I could be wrong. And that's where it ends. So this was interesting to get an understanding of who Wynn and Dimitri are as characters. Uh, how they kind of went after Kubik's core, though granted, we still don't have an understanding of what his ma uh, his master wanted, so that's still in the effect. Uh, we got the first thing stopped, but we don't know what could be going on later, but this kind of war of how it's kind of going on, I understand when kind of talking about it like that, and we're probably going to get some kind of shakeup. I mean, the natural order of things was decimated by this fight. We'll have to see what they kind of do and how the powers that be respond to that so i like this with certain kind of things definitely with like win and dimitri and aiko and everything kind of going on in dr strange it's just it's very big heavy concepts and i think there could have been a better way to execute what was kind of going on and understanding what's happening here uh, the art is just beautiful i mean if you want it just for the art if you value it at ten dollars go for it it's I think it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, but if this story doesn't sound interesting to you, which I don't blame you for, it's kind of, it's not executed the most horrendous I've ever seen. I've seen and read, done other kind of things that have been worse. But it's still kind of heavy, and we still need to see what's kind of going on for it. So it's hard to not recommend it or to recommend it. If you're into the art and the kind of wittiness of Wynn and Dimitri and everything kind of going on, I think you'll have a good time with this if you're willing to go for the price. If not, I don't think you would be bad for skipping it and that any kind of giant kind of repercussions coming out of this should be as adequately explained in other kind of Marvel titles going forward. Should be doesn't mean it always happens. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.